Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking an early look at the upcoming Windows full screen experience for handhelds. And this is basically the same thing we're going to get over on the ROG Xbox Ally X and the ROG Xbox Ally when it launches. Basically, Microsoft wanted to make it more streamlined for handhelds. And as you can see, I mean, I'm switching between games here on the fly. Uh, we can head back to the Xbox experience. There's a few things missing in this early version that will be present once this is officially released, but I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at it. But overall, it's been a pretty smooth experience on the ROG Ally X. I've also tested this on the MSI Claw A8 with the Ryzen Z2 Extreme APU. I just plugged this into my game capture so we could get a better look at everything, but once you boot it up, it's going to look a little something like this. This is the Xbox app. Now, I've set up a couple hotkeys, so I've got an Xbox button mapped on my Ally X. This will be our window manager, and at any time, we can press that button and move over to whatever other app we have running. So this is pretty nice. Um, not much has changed here, and to tell you the truth, I don't have that many games installed because this was a fresh install of Windows, but it does support the aggregated game library. So you can see we've got our Steam logo right there with Spider-Man and our Game Pass logo right there with Gears of War. Again, Game Pass, we've got our library right here. And I wanted to show you because my apps, at the time I'm making this video, it looks like the aggregated game library is going to support Ubisoft, Steam, GOG, Epic, and Battle.net. So yeah, these are the apps that I have. And if I want to run one of them, we'll just start up Steam. This automatically starts in big picture mode for me, and I disabled that. So there was a time when I first installed this that it was starting up in the regular Steam mode. This is not a problem for me. I do like the way this looks. And the best part here is if we look right down here, Windows Desktop, it's not running. It's not in the background right now. Kills all of those processes for us so it doesn't use as much RAM or CPU to run all of that in the background. We can always enable the desktop if we want to, so you can still use your handheld as a gaming PC. But now we've got Steam up and running. I've also got my Xbox app here. But I can launch all of my games from here, everything that I've got installed. Scraping has been a bit of hit or miss recently. So this is Hades 2, but you can see there's no artwork, and this has kind of been the case. Hopefully this is ironed out. But other than that, we've also got our game bar, and at the time of making this, I don't have the version of Armory Crate that'll run in the game bar. This is what it should look like once uh, everything's ironed out. So we will have access to the Armory Crate quick settings inside of the game bar, which is going to be really awesome. That way we can adjust the TDP, change the resolution, frame rate, everything like that. It's going to be great. And this is kind of a new version of Armory Crate that'll go right along with it. If you want to go back to the desktop at any time, we've got an option right here. Exit full screen experience. So right now we're in full screen experience, which means we do not have to worry about the desktop. And with this, I wanted to show you system usage with and without the desktop running in the background. I just did a quick reboot because I was running a bunch of stuff, testing some things. So there's probably some processes left over. This is going to give us a good baseline and we're in full screen experience right now. I've also mapped a button for my task manager. And you can see that with the task manager, it's not on the desktop. It opens up in its own window. From performance, we've got our CPU. We've also got our memory here. We'll let it sit. We'll let that bar go right across and see exactly how much this thing is uh, using. Keeping an eye on that CPU and CPU utilization definitely seems very low right now. Doesn't need a bunch of processes running in the background. Overall, not too bad. Saw the CPU spike up to around 15% in one case, but it just comes right back down. And we're at 4.5 gigs of RAM usage. Okay, so now we're in desktop mode. I did a clean reboot like this. The only app I really let start up is the Xbox app because it's running in uh, full screen mode also. We'll go to the task manager. And it is using a lot more RAM here. We're at 6.7 gigs. 6.8, 6.7, that might drop down. But I also wanted to keep an eye on that CPU usage just to see if we had any crazy spikes with it. I'll just let this go for a little bit. So no super crazy CPU spike so far, and uh, we're at around 6.6 .6 gigs of RAM being used. Remember, in uh, full screen mode, we were at like 4.5 to 4.6. Microsoft did state that you can save around two gigs of system memory using full screen mode. So that's getting real close. 
And I'll tell you, once all of this is released, it's actually pretty easy to get into that full screen experience. We'll go to our settings, gaming, and right here we've got a new option, full screen experience. Allows us to choose the home app, and right now I can only choose the Xbox app, so I'm not sure if the home app could be selected later on, maybe Steam or another launcher, that would be pretty cool. Or maybe we could enable new third-party launchers, but right now we've just got Xbox. Enter full screen experience on startup, so it'll always bring us into the full screen experience, no desktop, or we can turn it completely off. Now, at any time, if we want to go back into the full screen experience, we can just open up our game bar. It's going to kill that desktop for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Another great feature we get here is the ability to swap between applications and games. So I've got Cyberpunk 2077 up and running right now, but I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna launch another game. So what I wanna show you here is um, two AAA games running. Now, obviously with something like the Z1 Extreme, we might not see good performance, but I still wanna try it here. I'm gonna go with Spider-Man 2. And a lot of these new games do have their own launcher built in, which can be disabled. But just to show you here, I've left this enabled so we can see this. Again, a lot of them can be disabled, like directly from the launcher itself. I just left this up. You can configure the game, and then once you have your settings correct, you can just disable it, and it won't show up. It'll go directly to the game itself. But I'm going to get this game started up. We've also got Cyberpunk 2077 running in the background. And real quick, when you're running two games, it will give you a little bit of a warning here. It'll allow you to launch the second game, but it tells you that one of the games is still running. So keep that in mind. So I've got both games up and running. Let's go ahead and test this out. So we're in Cyberpunk now, and yeah, I am using Frame Gen with both of these games because it really helps out on these handhelds. So it's not a $4,000 GPU. Uh, to tell you the truth, I thought performance would be a lot less because we are taking a bit of a hit over there with Spider-Man. It's not horrible. Let's swap over. And this game has given me a lot of issues recently on iGPUs with uh, a lot of stuttering. So we'll see what happens here. This is also using frame gen, but right in the middle of the swing, let's swap over to Cyberpunk. And it looks like if you give it a few seconds, once you swap over, it catches up. It's kind of like Windows needs to say, hey, uh, we're now going to be focusing on this app here or this game, but it works. And obviously if you're running two AAA games, it's not gonna work as well as if we were running a indie game, like let's say Hades 2 and uh, Borderlands 3. You could swap between them and you probably won't notice much of a difference with something like Hades 2. It just doesn't take a lot to run, but it's pretty cool that we can do this. Looks like it just kind of pauses that game right there for us. Last thing I wanted to test here was game performance. And to tell you the truth, the way everything's set up right now, I don't think there's gonna be a huge jump in game performance with full screen mode versus desktop mode. But I've got Cyberpunk 2077 running here, Steam Deck preset 1080p, 25 watt TDP. Over on the left hand side, we're in desktop mode. Over on the right hand side, we're in full screen experience mode. And so far, they look like they're on par with each other, but I'll let this finish up. And at the end of the benchmark, over in desktop mode, we had an average of 43.31 FPS. And in full screen experience mode, we had an average of 43.60 FPS. So there's no difference here when it comes down to it, at least at the time I'm making this video. And this could change in the future, but I'm not exactly sure how much it's really going to help out gaming performance. Overall, this is definitely a different experience for Windows on a handheld. It works out much better than I thought it would, but there's still more optimizations that need to be done to this version in order for everybody to be using it properly. And I'm going to run a few more tests here and there, and I'm going to run a few more gaming benchmarks here and there in desktop mode and full screen experience just to see what happens. But at the time of making this video, I don't think we're going to see a big performance jump just yet. Just a lot of new features, and it's actually great to see this on a Windows handheld. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this something that you're going to utilize? Or are you just going to stick with desktop mode or install Steam on your handheld? Let us know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.